also a software developer. Anyone else here a software developer? I think this is a great time to be a software developer. Really an amazing time to be a software developer. Um, I think it's a great time to be a software developer. I've, I've been doing this for about 25 years. Um, I got to it a, a little bit later in life because I'm pretty darn old, but uh, for decades I've been software developer. This is, this is a fantastic time to be a developer. It's a great time to be a software developer because we have so many great tools to work with. We have a variety of languages, we have toolkits, we have platforms we're going to operate on, we have um, frameworks to choose from, we have toolkits, we have um, we have great toys to play with. So some guy here's got HoloLens that you brought with them. Uh, virtual reality toys are amazing. Um, and we can use the tools to, the, of our choice to build the applications we want. We, we don't, we don't really have time when we had, when everybody sort of identified as a uh, a .NET developer or a Java developer. So, you know, I'm going to work on .NET. I'm going to build my code in C Sharp and uh, connect to SQL Server and everything on Windows. I'm going to be a Java guy. I'm going to put everything on Apache and uh, connect to Oracle and things like that. Those days are gone. We don't have that limitation anymore. We sometimes pretend like we do. We say we talk about the mean stack or the, the lean stack or things like that. But um, we're going to swap out Angular for some other JavaScript framework. We're going to swap out Mongo for some other database. These are modular things. And we can choose the technologies that are appropriate for us. It makes it an amazing time for it to be a developer. Uh, we, we're no longer constrained by the hardware that we're using. Uh, we have access to huge amounts of compute power because of the cloud. It used to be we had to have our own data centers. We had to buy our hardware. We had to maintain it ourselves. That's not true anymore. Now we can deploy things to the cloud and we can rent that hardware. Capital expenditures go down. And flexibility goes way up because our little startup that starts out with just a few users, when it explodes and people demand becomes really, really high, we don't do up by a bunch of servers. We take advantage of this massive capacity that cloud computing offers us, and we just scale out. And this is an amazing amount of flexibility that we as developers have. We don't have to have huge investments to create our own startups, to create our own businesses, to create our own applications, to create our own amazing app amazing features in our applications. Um, this is a great time to be a startup because of the DevOps story. Deploying applications has never been easy. There are tools to allow you to not only script the deployment of the software, but also to declare it clearly. Just say, this is how I want my software to look. Figure it out. Make that, make that application move, get deployed to the server, and maybe even build the server up. And when we start to automate those things, then they become repeatable to start doing them, things like a continuous integration. So every time we make changes to our code, it's automatically rebuilding everything. We test errors a lot, simpler, and build much, much better software. It is a great time to be a developer because of the cross-platform story. It's never been more apparent uh, anywhere else than in the mobile space. The, the emergence of the smartphone has changed things dramatically. And the competition in the smartphone industry means that we have some fantastic hardware, some fantastic operating systems. This is the thing that competition brings. But one of the consequences of this high competition is a very fragmented market. And so when this started to happen, when the rise of the smartphone came, we as developers had to make choices. Do we develop just for one platform and ignore a huge chunk of our potential audience? Or do we write our software multiple times so it runs on every platform, which is very expensive? You may have to hire an iOS developer, an Android developer, a Windows developer. Well, now we have tools that allow us to write code once and deploy it to multiple compiler for multiple platforms. So those tools are getting better and better, whether it's um, uh, Cordova or Ionic <coughs> or React Native or uh, there's another one for you in there. Xamarin. Xamarin. That's what Xamarin is. <laughs> so you can write code in JavaScript or C Sharp and, and for the most part compile it and have it work as those APIs for individual platforms that are extracted away from us make it much, much easier as developers to focus on what makes us special, what makes our application special. Not on this plumbing of how do I correct every single platform and repeat ourselves. Um, REST services, the tools for building REST services are, are amazing. And the wonderful thing about REST, REST are just web services. They use open standards like HTTP and JSON. And we can build REST services, deploy them out to the cloud, and now they're available other developers, regardless of what platform we're using iPhone developers, Ruby developers, .NET developers, it doesn't matter. These are open standards. Interoperability has never been better than it is right now. It's never been easier to implement. 
It's also a great time to be a developer because of all the giving back that you, the developers, are doing for the rest of the community. I see this has been going on a long time. Every year, I see the volunteerism in developers get more and more passionate. That can be uh, those of you who are answering questions on forums like Stack Overflow or publishing blogs about what you learned to share it freely with other people. That's awesome. 25 years ago, we didn't have that. We had to go find books to read and ask, uh, ask somebody. It was the, the amount of knowledge out there for free is amazing. Um, there are people that are organizing code camps like this in their spare time. They're volunteering their time to do that. There are people that are coming here for free to speak for other cities uh, at their own cost and giving up their Saturdays to do that so that you guys can get that education for free. Uh, there are people like Tony Serma who are on the board for Humanitarian Toolbox who are publishing and creating and supporting open source projects that will help nonprofits <coughs> and first responders. So if you're here and you want to give back to the community, one way to do this is go downstairs to room 26. 26 in the lower level. Help out Tony. Um, uh, absolutely. So in, in the decades that I've been doing this, I don't remember a time when I was more excited to be a software developer. Um, I brought with me a couple people here. I brought one of my friend and colleague, Brian Lewis, is here. He is also a technical evangelist. He focuses more on the IT infrastructure and the uh, uh, DevOps side of things. But Brian, what do you think? Do you agree with me? Is it a great time to be a developer right now? You're asking me if it's a great time to be a developer. I'm asking you, Brian Lewis. <laughs> I wasn't expecting you to ask me that. But uh, yes, I think it is a great time to be a developer. <laughs> <laughs>
I choose what directory I want to go against for the user authentications. I choose what subscription I want to use. That's the part that's going to pay for it. Um, I create a resource group. I can choose one or create a brand new one. Um, and then I choose what? What level I'm going to run. Am I going to do the free version or am I going to do a shared basic standard type size website? So all I really have to put in here is a SQL administrator password. And so I hit next. Oh, uh, one of the things I guess I didn't point out back here was the URL up here. This is where the code's coming from. Uh, GitHub, Project Naomi. So if I uh, just copy that. And let's go back to the next year. So I'm going to open that up next. But uh, basically, it's ready to deploy. So I hit deploy. And in about a minute, I will have this all set up for me, all automatically ready to go. And when I go into WordPress, all the fields that I just filled will already be inserted into there. And so what's really cool about that is that's all off of GitHub here. And if I go into their GitHub site, here's the code that's behind it, right? Well, what we just saw was with that infrastructure as code is this Azure Deploy JSON file. Just with this one text file, right, that's describing the entire environment. And so this here, this, this text file, has the, the pieces of information that I need, right, free, basic share, all that stuff. It also has everything else of what servers and, and how it links to the uh, SQL server. Everything's all described. That's all you need to create it. When I want to make a change, I can change this file and basically re-upload that, and it will make the changes to that without deleting the old install. Right, I'll just make changes. And stuff. That is really cool. So that's infrastructure as code, and people are using it today, and it's, it's used in production. So that is why I think it is a great time to be a developer, because there's tools like that. And it's not just for Microsoft. There's all kinds of other uh, environments where you can do that as well. And even inside your own on-premises environment, you can do that. So that is why I think it's really cool. But I'm going to ask Jason now. Do you think it's a great time to be a developer? To find out. I guess you have to find out. But uh, I think it's a great time to be a developer because of mobile. I'm going to ask a question to everybody in the room here. While we switch up devices. Um, <coughs> This is actually a picture from <coughs> the Zamina Vault, which took place over this week, well, this entire last week. We had 3,600 people attending, <coughs> and the conference was all about 
what I'm about ready to talk to you guys about, which is Xamarin. So one of the great things about being a developer right now is the level of opportunity we all have as developers. Every person just about is carrying this smartphone and has opened up all the possibilities that we can do for apps and services. You hear things like Humanitarian Toolbox, and it's just a fantastic time to be a developer. And one of the companies really leading this charge is Xamarin. And the reason that they're doing so is we have this... Uh, take what Dave was saying, where you have to build iOS applications in Objective-C, or build Android applications in Java, build them in C-sharp. Share your code, write most of the application once, and deploy it with all your native interfaces as a native app in C-sharp. So what I'm going to show for you today is actually going to be <coughs> is a new technology that they've been working on called Xamarin Forms. Are you here? So, one of the problems we have with mobile development is that idea we have to build it for this platform, build it for that platform, build it for that platform, in particular the UI. So what Xamarin has decided to do is, hey, let's share the UI, but not in a way that's going to look weird, in a way that's going to look native. So I'm going to show you guys the same app here, just a simple color picker. You guys all see that? And I'm going to show you these two, these apps right here. Now these are extremely simple applications. I can pick a color. I can say it's my favorite color if I want. Notice the little spin in the middle. And always the first hit, the first hit always takes a while. But I can do that on both, both of these platforms. Pick the color, say, oh yeah. And you see how they're a little different. Okay? So what if I told you that I only wrote one application here? This is the exact same application rendered a different way. Let's take that one step further. I'm actually going to launch a Windows 10 application now, too. <clears throat> so, when I launch the Windows 10 application, you're going to see a very similar UI. Same kind of UI here. You can hit green, I can hit favorite. It's very quick there, but you can see a little bar start to come out. Now, the cool thing here is, I only had to write this application one time. And I got a unique interface each time. And best of all, that iOS application, that Android application, that Windows, Phone, Windows 10 application, all use Xamarin. So not only am I able to write these applications once, but I can also now build them with tools that I'm familiar with and tools that allow me to still adhere to those native standards, to still give you all the ability to use your mobile phones in the way that you want, that you're used to. And really kind of drive home the opportunity cost of having a, a smartphone in your pocket and what it means. So I think it's a great time to be a developer because really, smartphone in your pocket, supercomputer in your pocket, and the amount of opportunity that you're given. And now we have the tools and technologies to make developing those applications much easier. Dave? Thanks, Jason. show you something really cool here. Uh, this is, um, we're doing, uh, Microsoft doing a lot of work with machine learning. Machine learning is uh, a really hot topic. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's getting easier. It's still a little challenging, but it's getting easier. The tools are getting a lot better. Uh, we have tools inside of Azure, for example, that you just rapidly can actually create machine learning solutions. But even if you're not listening to machine learning, you can still take advantage of it. The challenge of machine learning is that typically, well, first of all, machine learning is the idea of taking lots of data and learning from that data, doing predictive analysis, saying what are the, how are properties in that data related to other properties in that data? And if I get more similar data, can I predict what things are going to be? Um, uh, to do that, it takes a lot of computing power. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of data. That's typically what machine learning takes. Well, luckily, in the cloud, we have a lot of computing power. We can run things in parallel to cut down the amount of time, um, and we have access to a lot of data um, as well from some of the things that we've been doing. And even if you're not doing machine learning, you can still take advantage of the machine learning that other people are doing. Here's an example of it right, 
right here. This is built on top of something called Microsoft Cognitive Services. I'm going to talk later on in the breakout session this afternoon about building your own applications with Microsoft Cognitive Services. But here's an application built on top of that. This took data in the form of images. And this, this engine was fed lots of pictures of people. And it learned, what does a face look like? Where is a face? Where are the eyes? Where are the nose? Where are the mouths? And what are the attributes of the face? And I'd look at that and tell, is it a man? Is it a woman? Uh, do they have a mustache? How old is that person? And that's what this thing is doing. Is you put, give it a face, a picture here, and I click on use this photo, and it tells you, oh, there's the two faces in here, and they're both about 31 years old. And I can come in here, and I can grab other photos here. It's looked at enough people that are 31 years old that they can give a good estimate. Here's a better example. There are three faces up here, one of which is much younger than the other two. It's two years old. It's much about what a two-year-old face looks like, regardless of the expression on their face or where they're turning or um, uh, different attributes of the faces in there. In fact, just so you know, as I've set up, I come in here and I can do something like uh, look for a picture of the wind mom. Let's see, there's a picture of him in here somewhere. There he is. And use that photo and let's see how old he is while he's turning. <laughs>
that's what we, I think most coders are not a, a beyond, and it's not bad to go and grab that code when it's out there, as long as you're not facing open source and the closed source and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, it's the ideas of how, how to do a bubble sort and all that stuff, that isn't even, we don't even usually look or care about that stuff. That's a big part of my programming is the different sorts you would use to sort data in different ways that would be faster for different types of data. And now you plug it to a, to a black box and you say, sort this crap, right? It figures it all out. It does it the right sort the fastest way. It, these things are awesome and they keep getting better and better. And so this rate of change is really making it a, a great time to develop and build new tools and it's only going to increase. It's really hard to stay up on all the changes. It's is probably our biggest difficulty in this area. But uh, the rate of change really makes a great time to be a developer. The other things, as we saw, it's a great time to be a developer because of infrastructure is code. That's making things very easy for us as programmers to get things deployed and we don't need to use uh, IT pros necessarily. It's gonna change the way we do things in the future. IT pros are not going away, I'm glad to say, since I'm one. But the, uh, the, the world is gonna change. The, the programmer, the IT, uh, Pros who don't learn to program and do infrastructure as code, and they're going to be struggling. Um, cross-platform tools, whether it's Xamarin or other frameworks to do cross devices, which you know the devices and the wireless stuff is huge. Uh, but there's other things such as you know Python and open source uh, OSs, including Swift, and, uh, Node.js. There's all kinds of really cool things that work across all types of areas. And then lastly, machine learning. Uh, David showed you know. There's not only machine learning that you can go pull upon, it's this whole internet thing. Again, I think it's going to stay. Uh, the internet is, is giving these services that we as programmers can just go pull from. Right? If it's figuring out how old someone is, or if it's figuring out if it's a, a dog or what type of dog to be to capture so you can write some uh, exploit code. Whatever it is, you can pull on these services. And, and so it's really a great time to be a developer. So, that is what we have, uh, hopefully, the Chicago uh, Code Camp is great for you guys this weekend. Uh, with that, I am ready to hand it on over to Angela Dugan, who is a fantastic person I used to work with. And uh, I'm, it's really great to see you again today, so I will hand it on over to you. Oh,